This is a GPS receiver, data collector, CDMA modem, and Windows mobile computer. Wow. All at once. Of course, it starts up normal, just like a Windows mobile screen, but it built into this thing is the CDMA modem, which gives you real-time internet connection wherever you're at. As long as you have cell phone coverage, you've got internet connection. So you connect this with your reference stations? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. So this can this is an RTK system. Uh, it's just it's a, it's a Topcon GRS one, and it it's really changed the way that we do work on this island. And what what do you use for reference stations here? Uh, they're all Topcon receivers. Okay. Um, Topcon receivers with a software product called TCPCom that actually does the the networking interface for us. So you don't have any of the old green. Javad, it's all Topcon. Well, it's it's the Legacy E's, which really look just like Javad. yeah, look just like the okay. Javads, but it's okay. just it's their Topcon instruments. Okay. And you know, outside, I'm sure we'll see video of that. We've got a, uh, I think it's a CRS one is what the antenna is outside, but it's a you know radome choke ring. Is it part of the uh, NGS cores network? No, the no, it's no. it's individual on its own. It's it's ours. So, depending on what project I'm working on, I can move it to what control I want to hold. So I okay. I typically I, every now and then I move that the the coordinate for that base station. Right, right here that you were telling us about. You were telling us about all the features and that you run it off your reference station. Yes, and you I asked me a few questions about you. You know. Because we don't want people when we talk about a reference station, we're going to we're going to show a picture of this reference station when we go outside in a minute, mm -hmm. and it's actually fixed and it's not going anywhere. It didn't even move during the hurricane. Right, right. And so when you say you change the reference station, what is it that you mean? I I program different coordinates into it. And why would you do that? To be if the coordinates that are in it right now are based on a monument that's set in the seawall, uh, seventy five plus eighty, which is. PID AW0609. Sometimes, depending on the work I'm doing, I want to be based on the HGCSD set of monuments. There's three of them here on the island. That's about a three tenths vertical shift. The difference between the NGS control is what I change, whether I'm doing work that needs to be based on the city monumentation or if I'm doing work that needs to be based on a more county-wide set of monumentation. So the coordinate, you change X, Y, and Z, yes. or only Z? X, Y, and, and Z. Z. And how much change do you make? Very slight, very slight. Less than, slight. less than a tenth. Less than a tenth. Less than a tenth of north and east thing, and about three tenths vertically. Wow, three tenths vertically could mean a lot. Exactly, and it, it, it goes down. So people in the city, to do their elevation work, we base it on a monument that's within the city. So. They get a, a better read. Plus, the, the AW0609 is one of the monuments that shows up on the firm maps. And that's so, what people would run a digital level or a, or, or, or right. automatic level, a traditional right. closed level loop from. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that it's clarification. A bronze disc set in the cap or in the actual top of the actual seawall. Right. So it, you know, it's anchored to a huge piece of concrete, and it it didn't go anywhere. Cool. And this unit here, as opposed to the BAM 5000, what what features and why would well, it's, you do it's, this? It's got a couple of, well, for, first off, this is a full-blown RTK system, so you're, you know, sub-golf ball size kind of right. coordinates out of it. It has on board an L1 antenna to do imprecise locations, so you can do sub-meter with just this. Wow, like mapping grade? Mapping grade GPS mapping grade. in your hand. And will that run things like ArcPad? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. It's a Windows, Windows Mobile, wow. Windows Mobile 6.0, okay. and it'll run anything on there. The software that's on it now is the TopCon TopServe, right. which it has coordinate geometry routines, coordinate geometry like routines, way to interface with the reference stations and all. So, and you can do the mapping grade with it as well too. Uh, to go to a full-blown RTK setup, you have to add an external antenna, which is this. It's a Topcon PGA-1. It's just a L1, L2 GLONASS antenna that plugs via a little, little slip-in connector into the side of the unit here. 
Okay. And that's that's the only wire the thing takes. And by adding this antenna, you're able to actually do the centimeter or golf yeah. ball yes. RTK type work. Absolutely. Wow. And that's all that's involved. That's it. This is the receiver as well. That is the, the receiver, collector? data collector, CDMA modem. And how do you transfer data when you get back to the office, or how do well, you there's data? a couple of ways. Okay. One, you can use the USB port. Okay. Um, the other way you can do it is with the Bluetooth radio. It's got a Bluetooth radio, so you can send files with the Bluetooth. Um, you can buy them where they have Wi-Fi. This one, this particular one, doesn't have a Wi-Fi radio, so you could just log into the corporate network and transfer the files onto the server directly from it, or you can email them. Really? Because it's got the CDMA modem in it, okay. you can just use a plain old email, and so that frees you up with a lot of different capabilities because now you're standing on a survey 30 miles away from the office, you've shot some points, you need the assistance of the RPLS to resolve the boundary. Email in the point file. While you're standing there, the RPLS can resolve the boundary, email you back a stakeout file, set the corners, you're done with the job. Instead of loading up in the truck, coming back to the office, getting it resolved, going back out there, setting the points. When you collect data with this unit, are you also able to collect the raw GPS vectors in case you wanted to post-process or check yeah, the absolutely. The, the raw solution? file, right. uh, it's, it's very, it's it's got all the, the DX, DYs, DZs, and, okay. and the residuals on those that you can get out of it as well. Because that, that becomes important when we talk about coordinates. You know, coordinates are, uh, I believe, to quote Sid yesterday, he said one of the greatest things about GPS is you get a coordinate. And one of the worst things about GPS is you get a coordinate. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate on what he was meaning? What he means is that it, the mathematics involved in this thing is going to spit out an answer. So it doesn't mean it's a good answer. And, and how would you? How do you know? You know, how do you know the quality of your answer? Like daily, how, how do you guys? You know, do you see your work around here? Well, uh, my guys, they go and shoot a monument. So they check into a monument like before they like go to, to work. Yes, before they go to work, before they start a job, the first thing they do is they go shoot. And with the base station configuration the way I have it now, they go shoot that brass disc that's in the top of the seawall and they can check right on the data collector whether or not they're getting good answers or not. The well, they other don't just way navigate to it, they actually provide a position so every that day. You have the shot the number one shot. in every job is the check shot. Is the check and shot. And do you ever have checks during the day in case of like atmosphere you know, changes in the weather? Are there any other reasons that you would ever check? There we do if we change projects. Otherwise, they'll if they go to lunch and come back, they'll shoot something on the same job that okay. they've already shot. So right. we do an on-site check for anything secondary. Or if they're happen to drive by it when they go eat lunch, they'll jump out and pop it. Have, you know, I don't really know, but have y'all set any other company control to check into uh, that has state plane coordinates? That yes. Has? yes. So they, they'll use that as a primary point and maybe use some of your other control as secondary. As secondary. As secondary. Yeah. There's, there's five points on the island that we've got. Um, they can shoot any one of the HGCSD monuments, which are ones on the extreme east end of the island, ones about the middle of the island, and ones at the extreme west end of the island. Um, there's also a monument in between the two that we use, uh, G460 Reset, which is another NGS monument that we use. Well, NGS stands for National Geodetic Survey. National Geodetic Survey. used to be the USGS, U, U, uh, or US CGS or whatever. The US C well, what is the other acronym that you were using about HC? What, what is that? Harris HGC, uh, Harris Galveston County Subsidence District. And that is a district that is uh, just measuring subsidence of the area and they've set uh, really stable control monuments around that are listed in the NGS database. They went they're through the process. The they're blue booked. Wow, that's great. So, and they're stainless steel rods driven to refusal. So we know they're we know they're not moving. Right. That's right. great.